Welcome to another video from Everlast Refiners. This video will show you how to install an Everlast Refiner bypass oil filtration system on a 2005 Sterling commercial truck with a Caterpillar C13 engine. This kit contains everything you'll require to install this number 40 bypass oil filtration system equipped with a 12 volt thermal dehydrator inlet and outlet hoses, mounting brackets, regulating valve, oil sampling valve, oil pan fitting adapter, oil pressure switch adapter, installation hardware kit, inline fuse, power and ground wire assemblies, and one number 40 filter element. Replacement elements are available at our website everlastrefiner.com. The first step to installing this bypass oil filter system is to install the oil refiner canister. This particular truck is a roll-off truck and so we selected to install it on the roll-off post on the driver's side. First install the mounting brackets on the driver's side roll-off post using the quarter 20 by 1 inch bolts, nuts, and lock washers provided in the hardware kit. Locate the brackets on center and 20 inches above the frame rail. Orient the refiner canister so that the return port is facing toward the cab at a 45 degree angle. Install the refiner canister on the brackets just installed using the quarter 20 by 1 inch bolts, nuts, and lock washers provided in the hardware kit. Once installed, the refiner canister must be reasonably level. Using the thread sealant provided, attach the non-swivel end of the 3 quarter inch return hose assembly to the return port on the side of the canister and route the 3 quarter inch return hose down and forward along the driver's side frame rail to the engine oil pan. Next, remove the accessory port plug located on the driver's side of the oil pan and drain the engine oil. Install the oil pan adapter fitting onto the oil pan. This is a O-ring boss fitting and does not require a thread sealant. Next, using the thread sealant provided, install the 3 quarter inch 90 degree street elbow onto the adapter just installed and orient this elbow as shown in the photo. Using the thread sealant provided, attach the swivel end of the oil return hose to the 3 quarter inch street elbow just installed. This hose assembly returns oil to the oil pan by gravity, so the hose assembly must go downhill all the way to the oil pan connection. At no point in the routing of the return hose assembly should it go uphill. Secure the routing of the return hose assembly as required with the provided tie wraps and replace the engine oil and check the leaks. Next, install the pressure hose assembly. Using the thread sealant compound provided, install the oil sample valve and the oil regulating valve assemblies onto the bottom of the inlet port of the oil refiner canister as shown. Using the thread sealant provided, install the non-swivel end of the 1 quarter inch pressure hose assembly to the bottom valve on the oil refiner canister. There are two valves attached to the bottom of the oil refiner canister. The one on the side with a 90 degree elbow and plug is for taking oil samples. The bottom valve is for regulating the flow rate of the incoming oil. Route the pressure hose assembly down and forward along the driver's side frame rail to the engine oil pressure switch located on the driver's side of the engine. It's located in the middle of the engine about halfway up. Secure it as required with the tie wraps as provided. At the engine oil pressure sensor, disconnect the hydraulic hose and install the JIC oil pressure switch adapter T provided and orient the side port downward as shown. These are all JIC connections and do not require thread sealant. Install the JIC end of the pressure hose assembly to the side port of the oil pressure switch adapter T just installed. Now it's time to power the thermal dehydrator. Access the power distribution panel located inside the passenger side of the cabin dashboard. Route the red wire 
through the firewall adjacent to the lower air conditioning condenser line located below the passenger side dashboard. Route the red power wire down and along the passenger side frame rail following the existing wire harness. At the rear of the cab, route the red power wire up along the oil return line to the refiner canister lid. Strip the end of the wire and crimp the number 10 blue hoop connector provided onto the exposed end of the wire and attach it to one of the heating element posts on the lid. Does not matter which, the heating element is not polarity sensitive. Secure the wire routing with the tie wraps provided as required. Back at the power distribution panel in the cab, route the red power wire up and behind the power distribution panel as shown. Strip the end of the red power wire and crimp one end of the blue butt connectors provided onto the exposed wire. Connect the inline fuse to the other end of the blue butt connector just installed, cutting the wire loop on the inline fuse assembly and strip the ends of the wires. Crimp the blue spade connector provided onto the remaining end of the inline fuse. Insert the spade connector into the fuse slot number 19 as shown. Attach the black ground wire assembly to the remaining post on the oil refiner lid heating element and to one of the bracket bolts. Now it's time to operate the system and check for leaks. Remove the heated lid using a rag or a glove. Um, this lid on the refiner canister is an electrically heated lid and it gets up to about 240 degrees which isn't enough to actually burn your skin but you wouldn't want to hold on to it very long. Once you remove this lid you will be exposing a stair step dispersion plate which is used to spread oil out on a thin layer and expose it to a hot dry environment so that the water and fuel contamination can be exposed and gas off. Now once the oil flow rate is established, regulate the valve that's at the bottom of the canister so that you have a slow even flow. Once that is established, idle the engine up to its normal operating speed and re-establish the slow even flow with that regulating valve. Maintaining your bypass oil filtration system is relatively simple. Every 20,000 miles, Remove the lid from your refiner chamber and check the flow rate across your dispersion plate. If you see a reduction in oil flow rate, then you know it's time to replace your filter. Also, pull an oil sample at this time and submit it to an oil laboratory. If you have any questions about the results from those laboratory analysis, please contact Mark at EverlastRefiner.com. We are here to support you and answer all of your technical questions. Thank you.